All right, so let's talk a little bit about vectors and close the disconnect between what I think people may know about search and what I talked about in the blog post last week. Um, so first, the vector space model is how all search engines work. You plot documents or pages in multi-dimensional space. You also plot queries in multi-dimensional space. And then the documents that are physically closest to the queries in multi-dimensional space are considered the most relevant. And in Google's environment, they actually treat the vectors for the queries different from the vectors for the documents. And I talk about this a little bit when I talk about uh, their embedding models for Vertex AI. And so this is important because this is fundamentally how search engines have worked, you know, going back to like the 60s and 70s, right? And so back in the day, prior to the advent of more semantic retrieval models, um, most search engines worked on the TFIDF uh, concept. So standing for term frequency, inverse document frequency, and that also works on what's called the bag of words representation model. And so what you're seeing here is basically a vector representing all of these different sentences. Each of these sentences could be considered a different document, right? And so what you do is you drop all what they call the stop words. So words like of, to, the, and so on. And then you limit it to the other words uh, that represent that document. And so when you do that, you then count the number of incidents of those words in each page. And so in this example, if the keyword is related to like cat, well, that first document would be considered the most relevant because it's used that keyword the most. And there's other components to this as well, where, you know, you also want to make sure that they, uh, keywords that are, you know, not mentioned a lot that are more valuable, get a, a more of a weight and so on. So it's not as simple as I'm making it out to be, but the idea here is that you're counting the presence of words. And this is fundamentally one of the lexical concepts for search, right? And so when you do relevance, when you calculate relevance, it's really cosine similarity of angles between the vectors. And so where the cosine uh, angle is close to one, that means it's similar or highly relevant. If it's uh, close to zero, that means it's orthogonal or not related. If it's negative one or close to it, that means it's opposite. So when we are using in our tool OrbitWise, it's basically a function of that value. Now, Google went away from lexical to semantic, not entirely, they still use both, but semantic has been layered on since like 2013 uh, with Hummingbird. And so the main difference here is that lexical is like, are the words on the page? Cool, make it rank for those keywords. But semantic is, is the concept represented on this page? Is this meaning on this page? And the words don't necessarily have to be there. So there is a breakthrough called Word to Vec or Word to Vector, which was led by uh, Tomas Mikhailov and Jeff Deem at, at Google, where they were basically able to use neural networks to generate these word vectors. And so the idea here is that you're capturing these representations in multidimensional space in a higher fidelity way. So it's not just the presence of these words, it's the relationship of these words on the page. And so that gave us these like, um, it's called like an array of floats or a series of decimal numbers that represents these ideas. And then that allows us to do uh, a different type of mathematical operation to understand the difference or the relationships between concepts and documents. So it allows us to do things like this. In this example, this is like the famous example. If you take the vector for the word king, subtract the vector for the word man, add the vector for the word woman, the closest match is the vector for the word queen. And so now you can effectively take concepts or meaning and subtract parts of it to then understand other meaning. And so if I have two pages, I can vectorize them, subtract one from the other, and then see what the, the semantic difference is, plot that in multidimensional space, and then see what are the closest concepts to that. So if we apply that to the optimization of pages, well, it's then that we're just not saying like, okay, what keywords are missing? We can say what concepts are missing based on that understanding. 
So again, what we're talking about here is this idea of words being converted into coordinates. So in this example, how old are you? That turns into a series of coordinates that look like this. And then you can do this semantic similarity between them to determine how related they are. So the difference between a TF-IDF and, you know, word to vec or anything that followed it is that TF-IDF is considered a series of sparse embeddings. So not a lot of information is captured or represented or encoded here. Whereas the dense embeddings allow us to understand things in a more granular way. And so words of that gave us hummingbird. That was the dramatic change in understanding that we that Google had that allowed them to better understand like what a page was about, even if uh, certain keywords weren't represented. And so since then, um, you know, Google has basically been creating these embeddings, these vector embeddings, that kind of live on top of the index um, so that they could do this sort of analysis, not just with your queries, but also with the documents. And so what changed everything was the advent of something called the transformer. And I'm not gonna go into the, you know, the complexities of how all this operates, just know that the transformer has changed natural language processing dramatically uh, through the advent of these more dense embeddings and the things you can do as a result of them. So Transformer gave us BERT. BERT obviously dramatically changed Google's understanding of queries and understanding of documents because they could not only just understand the relationship, but also the context of words. And so what I mean by that in this example, and this is another famous example, you have two sentences here. One, we went to the riverbank. And two, I need to go to the bank to make a deposit. There's no the there, but there should be. And so with words of act, they didn't understand the difference between bank and both of those sentences. But now with Bert, they can. So they understand that bank means, you know, a place that you go that has money versus a river bank, which is like a place, you know, where you go to water. And so their ability to represent the, the documents in a more granular way with that context has changed their ability to understand that meaning and then surface those results to you. So now Google looks a lot more like this. Well, with, with SGE or AI overviews, it's got a whole nother layer on top of it. But you know, with um, BERT, they added this layer of, again, just like further entrenching this idea of the language model and, and the vector embeddings within the indexing process. So they've been doing this hybrid uh, semantic and lexical search for a while now. They've been public about it since 2020, but they've been doing it for some time. And in this paper, they talk about, here's how you would do it with open source stuff, including BERT, including uh, BM25, which is like the best version of TF-IDF for simplicity. Um, and they also talk about like how they fuse them together. So that idea basically looks like this. They're pulling things from our standard index, the inverted index, which we all know and love from SEO. You get a result set and then you do the same thing on the semantic side based on the vector embeddings and you get another result set and then you merge them together and then you re-rank them based on a variety of different factors. And so this is why I'm saying that there's been such a gap in the SEO space because we don't have anything historically to understand what's going on on that semantic side. And a lot of times we'll see results and we're like, we don't understand why this is ranking because our mental model of it is like, well, the keywords in the page title, the keywords in the H1, the keyword is distributed through the copy. The pages are linked to with the keyword in the anchor text and you don't necessarily have to have those things in order to be in the result set for the semantic side of it. So this is how Google is working across everything, right? Like it's not just for text, it's working this way for images, for videos, audio, and so on. And again, all the, the advancements that we're seeing at IO are only making all this stuff better. Um, but when we talk about this concept of BERT and dense retrieval, Dense retrieval is really, you know, them leveraging these very detailed embeddings that again, continue to get better to score down to the sentence or paragraph level. 
So it's their ability to really understand components of the content as well as the overarching context of the content. And so you see this played out in uh, featured snippets. You see it playing out at a, a different scale with the AI overview, but it also is how they are identifying the specific section in the content. So in the featured snippet, they're showing you like, it's this sentence here. And then they use the whole scroll to text thing to uh, highlight it as well. And so Google can do this across a variety of things, right? Like it's not just from a words perspective, it's not just from an image perspective, it's also from like an entity perspective. They've got representations of websites. It's how they really understand your content on a deep level. So website representations, they've also got author representations. So when we talk about EAT, it's really leveraging all these embeddings and these variety of different aspects and then using that to determine how things are related. So that should help you like close the gap between, you know, what it is I talk about in the blog post because now Screaming Frog and also, you know, a variety of other tools that can, can do this as well um, are allowing us to understand our content in this way. And then that way you can, you know, vectorize it yourself, see how relevant how relevant it is, and then think about like, okay, well, maybe we need to adjust this to make it more relevant in order to be in these consideration sets. And then there's all those other use cases that I talked about in the blog post as well. But this, from my perspective, is the missing link between what Google is doing and what we're able to do as SEOs. It may, and it makes so much sense. I mean, if people have, have more questions, they, they should definitely reach out directly. But to your point, like you're combining the art and the science and giving people the tools, the science to mathematically look at their content and do it in a way that Google is thinking about it. Because we can look at something and be like, oh, that's relevant. But that doesn't mean like you've wrote, wrote the whole blog post on like the fact that Google is quantifying our words. And that's what this whole mm -hmm. thing is about. So th those are the tools that are there. It's just a matter of putting them into your process to create your content more efficiently for your business. Mm -hmm. Exactly. There you go. Any more questions? Reread uh, Mike's blog post now and hit us up at iPoll Rank. Catch you later.